and welcome to UMS Performance Playground. My name is Maddie Wildman, she, her, hers. I am a bassoonist, and I'm also a UMS staff member, and I'm really glad you're here today to learn about the bassoon. So like most bassoonists, I like to say that uh, I did not choose the bassoon. The bassoon chose me. Uh, I grew up doing music, playing a lot of different instruments in band. And when I made it to high school, there were 13 flutists, including me. So the band director needed a bassoonist. Uh, and I volunteered, and not really knowing what the bassoon was, but immediately upon playing it, I really, really loved it. Um, I love how the vibrations feel inside of my body. I love how it's like an extension of my body when I play, almost like I'm singing. Uh, and that was almost 10 years ago now which it's been a pretty wild ride since then. This bassoon has taken me all kinds of different places and I've got to meet some incredible people. Probably my favorite thing about being a musician is how social the profession is, how much I get to meet people who are just really passionate and lovely and I wouldn't trade that for the world. So if you like what you're hearing today and you're interested in the bassoon, you can maybe ask a band director in your life about it. So there's a lot to learn about the bassoon, but here's just three facts to get you started. The first thing you need to know is the bassoon can play very low. But it can also play very high. So the bassoon often occupies a bass role in different ensembles, but because it has such a huge range, it can really occupy a lot of different roles. Another thing you need to know is that the bassoon is really quite old. Uh, the first instrument that was called a bassoon came from around the 1600s, and then it evolved into its modern form around the 1800s. However, there are predecessors to the bassoon that kind of look like it and are called different things that date all the way back into medieval times. A third thing that you need to know about the bassoon is that it has its roots in Western Europe in classical music, but just like most instruments, it's traveled the world, it's met a lot of different people, and through that process has worn a lot of different hats. So there are definitely lots of bassoonists that play classical music, but there are bassoonists who play jazz, or funk, or klezmer, electronic music, improvisation. Really, I like to tell people that you can do whatever you want with this instrument. So the bassoon is a double reed instrument. Uh, we're in the same family as the oboe or a lot of other instruments from around the world. You can learn more about those double reed instruments in the Google Slides with this lesson. But when we say double reed instrument, all we mean is that it's this little reed right here, and it's two pieces of wood vibrating against each other. When you play it by itself, it sounds like this. And when you play the bassoon without the reed, it sounds like this. So the reed is pretty important to the sound, and a lot of bassoonists, myself included, actually make our own reeds by hand. Now, when I actually play the bassoon with the reed on, I'm using my fingers to change what note I'm playing. And when I blow into the instrument, the air travels through this little metal pipe. It goes down the instrument here, 
all the way down here, and you can actually see that there's a little pipe here that wraps back up around, and then the air travels back up this other bigger tube and out the bell up top. So I'm going to show you what that looks like when I move my fingers. I am opening holes up and down that really long tube that wraps back up around. <laughs> And in addition to that, I also use my tongue to start and stop the notes and change how short and long they are. I'm just moving my tongue on and off of the reed. And in addition to that, I can use my mouth and my lips to change the sound. And then if that didn't seem complicated enough, we also make sounds that aren't even really notes. We like to call them extended techniques. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that too. So musicians often use music to tell a story or to paint an image or create a mood. This next piece I'm going to play for you, it's called Secret Leaves. It's written by Dai Fujikura. And I love that title. I love when the leaves change outside. I love the leaves all year round, honestly. And I really like the idea of them holding secrets. It just kind of makes my mind tick a little. So when you're listening to this next piece, Sit back and listen and think about how the music might tell the story of the secret leaves. So for this next piece, uh, I'm going to play something totally different. In fact, I'm going to make it up on the spot. So I don't know what the title is. I don't know what the story is. I don't know what it's about. It's up to you to let me know. So you can go ahead and download the worksheet that comes with this lesson, and it will give you some guidance on how you could draw or tell the story of what this music is saying. Or you can just sit back and listen, maybe close your eyes, and let your imagination go wild.
So I want to thank you for joining me today at UMS Performance Playground, and I hope you had a lot of fun today learning about the bassoon. You can look for the Google Slides and the worksheet that come with this lesson to learn more. And I am genuinely curious what you thought of that last piece that I played. I'd love to see your pictures or your stories. You can email all of that to umsyouth at umich.edu. Now you have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.